you welcome back another day another vlog ah, what a day busy busy all what's happening so a few things coming up in the thing i had some items turn up in the post so that's pretty cool one i'm going to be a review and an unboxing coming next week so excited about that some zen pod airpods that i got through the kickstarter from zen Dua. uh noise cancelling all the good stuff for crazy price normally 100 bucks i think at the moment they're 80 bucks so stay tuned for that i'm going to shoot that next week at work and get that out next week as a priority uh, because i think you really like that and I want to test them uh, as well and get it all sort of done so that looks pretty cool and the other thing is because i'm traveling a lot i can't get another sleeping bag so <laughs> i have to give myself a, cl a climate give myself a climate sleeping bag the ksb 35 uh, nice and light and small because i've got a like a five hour stopover in Perth when I go backwards and forwards. And uh, it's a little bit cold in winter. So uh, when you're sitting at the airport waiting, there's no heated rooms or anything. Uh, so you can just sort of wait outside. So I've got myself a little sleep bag and fit in my luggage to help out with that. So I think that's gonna be good. It was cold last time. <laughs> uh, I managed to snag a spot out of the wind, but uh, it rained a fair bit. Uh, this week in Perth, so and it may be raining next week, so I'm assuming it's going to be even colder, so that's no fun. Um, other than that, uh, if you haven't already, obviously there's no video tonight because me being an idiot, whatever I did the other day uh, when I uploaded this week's video, day 10, which is Bluff Knoll, fantastic video, an amazing day for me. It was the day after my 46th birthday, and I climbed up 1,098 metres of just ridiculousness to some of the most beautiful views I've ever seen. I can definitely see why those mountain climbers get hooked on it. It's an adrenaline buzz like nothing you've ever had. Uh, and it just about kills you on the way up. But when you get there, it just all that pain and suffering just, just goes because you just go, wow. So if you haven't already seen that video, it is live. It's been live for a couple of days. My apologies again for stuffing that up. Normally I like to get them as a premiere. So at least it comes up so you can lock it in and. To, uh, remember to do it when you can fit it in. I know how everyone bus is so busy nowadays, um, but it is there. Go check that one out. So that was pretty cool. Um, other than that, I've got some other stuff. I was going to pack and sell my 18 to 35 Sigma Art series this week, um, but my case is in with all the house stuff. So it's going to be a late July jobby. Uh, if you are keen about it and you do want the 18, if you're looking for 18 35 in basically mint condition, uh, had a service, I think, uh, start of the year, or well, yeah, December, I sent it away and got the new PCB board on it, so it's all operating 100%, Sigma, Sigma done. Uh, let me know and I can we can work something out, and then once I get the, the case for it in July, I can send it out and we can work out a deal, so let me know about that. I do have a Canon 16 to 35 L series, come in the 2.8 which is going to be fantastic a it gives me a couple of extra mil that's 16 mil it's a full frame whereas adding the 35 is the APS-C uh, version so it's it's still an EF bit of glass it's a fair series so it's an old but it looks like it's in good condition it's all coming from all the way from Italy uh, from the gentleman there so looking forward to get that and giving it a run on the RP and uh, yeah very excited about that my first L series taken a while to get there and it cost me my m50 to be able to afford it but uh i think it's a good little sacrifice if it's a good lens and and the optics are still all in good nick which i'm pretty sure they should be um yeah can't wait to use it and very excited to see what i can do with it um other than that uh what else have we got going on yeah just just trying to get sort of just happy to be home again so first swing back for a couple of months which has been sort of good to have that break so it's good to get back into work and even better when you get home and little Jack's running around and that was pretty fun and I've had it yesterday I had a ball playing with him and this morning we'd run a muck together so that's always fun as a dad now news wise we'll get into that before I forget it <laughs> um, Anchor we're going to talk about Anchor first now I'm a big Zendua fan but I'm also a fan of anything that makes my life easier and now with a MacBook 16 inch Pro I'm trying to get away from that big charge that they have. It's a massive brick that weighs. I've got a lightweight sleep bag now. I'm trying to compact everything for the travel. You've got to be smart when you're going backwards and forwards 16 times a year across the country. Um, 
I think it was about, ended up about 16 or 17 hours of flying Wednesday. I didn't get home till two o'clock in the morning after leaving work at uh, about seven, eight o'clock on my first flight. Um, but basically seven o'clock, I got on the bus to go to the airport and then I didn't get home here till two o'clock the next day. So long, long day. So a lot, three different flights, a three hour drive, a massive day. So I'm trying to get away from, trying to minimize what I have to carry. And the best part about that is uh, good stuff there, good products out there at the moment. Uh, Sendua makes some great stuff, uh, but also Anchor's got some good gear out as well. Now they don't have it, no one's got a 100 watt charger that'll suit the MacBook that's smaller. That's really what I'm hanging out for. Hopefully someone can bring that out, that'll be cool. But Anchor's just bought out a new USB to USB 100 watt rated cord. Now it's super supple, uh, really flexible, won't, won't sort of kink and get the things. The Apple cords are, are not the best. They're, they're flexible, but they curve. My Apple Watch one, if you don't get in the right angle, it's terrible. Uh, but yeah, it's still big and flexy and hard. So I'm trying to get a smaller, a short. I want to get a shorter version. Anchor does four different colors in these. It's only 23 bucks American. So 23 bucks. Yeah, 23 bucks US. So probably about 30 bucks Australian. Get a three foot cord instead of having to have a six foot long. I don't need a six foot long cord. Um, but a little three foot cord that I can have, nice, soft, supple silicon outer layers, but it's got all the good gear inside. Uh, I think it'd be good. So if you're looking for a new cord to replace a damaged or fray one, definitely check out Anchor. That, uh, that's not too many of us do that USB cord at that price and at that quality. So look, a big, good brand too, and it should be very, very cool. Um, WWC day four obviously kicked off last night for us in Australia. Um, daytime over there. Now look, there was no MacBook 14 or 16. It was uh, like, I guess I guess you have to say that a lot of people disappointed. Poor old John Prosser copped the slaying. He even had death threats, I think he said on his show today. It's a little bit disappointing. Like It's not an exact science, uh, trying to get information and leaks before companies release stuff. Uh, it's, an, it's an art form. It's, a, it's a knowing the right people, having the right connections being able to talk to people and get them to trust you and give you information that could possibly cost them their job. So yeah, you got to give people a little bit of slack, you know? No one's going to be right 100%. There's definitely not going to be happening. So look, for him to give us pretty close, uh, I think he did a pretty good job and you really can't knock him for having a crack. Now, the interesting thing is they all uh, put the slag on him, uh, but uh, a young fellow on Twitter today, um, oh, geez, I can't remember his name. I should have wrote it down found in the taglines for Apple's actual event, uh, MacBook Pro M1X and M1X as tag tag words. Now, there, now you might say, right yeah, that could have been the SEO, and there was a few people saying, oh, that's just for the SEO, but they didn't use M2 in the SEO. If they wanted to get S, S, SEO words, which is basically a tag word to help you get in a better algorithm for uh, YouTube, two secs. Um, then you'd, you'd have every option in there, wouldn't you? You're not going to just have one option because people have been talking about M2, they've been talking about M1X as the possible names. Now, if you're going to go tags, you're going to have both in there. They didn't. So it's obviously the right name. So look, I think I'd have to say at least 90%, 90% of the time, 100% of the time, it's going to be one M1X for the new MacBook Pros and the new chip. So look, that's pretty cool. Um, and John Press, I did think, did talk about the M1X. So look, I think it doesn't matter what it is. We're all just excited to see what it can do. I think that's the main thing, what it's called. It doesn't matter. Uh, you can be called all sorts of different things in your life, uh, names. If, you, if names are all you're worried about, then I think you have bigger issues than what's coming out from Apple. So it look, looks pretty exciting. Um, maybe we might get a, a separate one-off event that Apple might just spring on us, do something different for a change. That, that could be pretty cool. Uh, just come out. It is a big, important thing. Um, they haven't had a 16-inch update well, for over 12 months. I got the first one, which is 2000, late 2019, so it's well over a year, a year and a half nearly. Um, and then after I got mine, four weeks later, they put the new the GP unit. Since then, it's been nothing. Uh, so it would be pretty exciting to see that. A new body, a new shape, which we've all been hanging for for a long time. The, they are getting old. 
the bodies that Apple uses now. So yeah, that would be pretty cool. Now, uh, day four, look, the biggest thing out of day four, some really exciting stuff, and that's called Replay Kit. And that is the ability to in-app record what you're doing. So gaming, uh, training, and even for us guys in the creative space, uh, when we're doing a Lightroom training tips and videos, you have the ability to go into the app on your iPad, I'm assuming on your MacBooks and your phones and stuff, record it in there and then use that data. You're also gonna have the ability to uh, live stream it direct and also uh, use it for training and stuff like that. So pretty cool stuff um, uh, coming out there from Apple. So that's pretty cool. That was probably the biggest thing out of WWDC day four. And look, I think it's gonna be good. You can also add filters and overlays to it all. And as I said, broadcast, stream it. So very, very cool. Now, um, coming also out uh, on the drone side, Swell Pro, if you haven't heard of Swell Pro, they do waterproof drones. Uh, they've been around for a long, long time. They, these are the guys, you can throw your remote control in the water uh, and they're brilliant, brilliant bits of kit and they do really, really well. So they have the new Swell Pro 4 coming out. It's going to due out in June. I'll keep you updated. I'm just waiting for some more info on it to see the specs and stuff and get out for you. Now they've got the waterproof side down pat, the controls and everything, fantastic. Probably the only thing they really need to beef up is the photo quality and the video quality. If they can do something in those lines, I think they're definitely gonna be a contender to go up in the market. It's very rare that, like, it's great to have DJI and all tell, but as soon as it rains, you gotta get those drones away and hide them. Uh, snow's not gonna be much good for them if you crash into the snow that's wet. Uh, it's not good. Well, these are things that can you can just you actually can deliberately fly them into the water. They'll self flip back out of the water. You can video under the water if you're over a coral reef or something, and you want to get some awesome shots of some fish. Uh, there's so much you can do with the Swell Pro series. So definitely, I will keep informed on the new one coming out. Hopefully, in the next week or so before well, before the end of June, it's definitely going to be released. But uh, yeah, we'll have some more info shortly as soon as I get hold of that. So it's something exciting coming from Swell Pro. Now, the big one today, uh, Tesla Model S played, got released, announced, the, they had their, what do they call it? The uh, delivery event. Uh, Elon Musk was there as per normal, his usual Elon, uh, takes off in the car, does a crazy speed, does a loop around, drives up on the stage in the S, um, and what a car. It's broken most of the records, and we'd go through a bit of that, just a reminder of how amazing this is, but, the only but is the cost. It's about 100, I think 130,000 US. Um, that's, I think they're about 300 plus thousand here in Australia with all the crazy taxes we have to pay on once you get in, to get into the country. Um, but what a car. Fastest production car in the world, 1.99 seconds, zero to 60 or 100 Ks, which is just insanity. Um, it'll do a 9.23 second quarter mile which is insane. I actually think in Australia, there are some rules, sub 10 second quarter mile times, you actually might have to have roll bars. I know we've, oh, there's a guy who used to drag cars that I used to work with at Hastings and Darwin. He had one in a sub 10 second car and he had to put roll bars in it, even though it was street legal. So I'm not sure how that's gonna work for something like this. You have to put roll bars in a Tesla. It's gonna be a bit scary and that could re basically shut down the whole selling point of that. So I'm not sure how they got past that rule or if that rule's still valid, but 9.2, that's ridiculous speed in any car, let alone something driving along the road. That's pretty insane. The cops would not have a chance of catching you. So I can see a few of these being drug cars. <laughs> Could've got a lot of boot space too. <laughs> now, um, it's 412 mile range, Elon was saying, um, and that's with a dual motor version. And you can beef it up. There's some options coming down the track. Now, this has got the whole new battery system. That's the one they brought out last year. This will be the first car with those new batteries um, with the copper all the way around the top instead of just one point. They go all the way around so you can suck the juice out and pump it back in super fast. Um, supercharge it. You can do it 187 miles in, after 15 minutes of charge. So you can have a coffee and go basically another 180 miles to your next stop, so very cool. That's what we do need. Um, 200 miles an hour top speed. Again, you can't do that 
the Autobahn and Germany is the only place now I think that I know of that is unlimited speed. The Territory used to be, and then all the do-gooders in Canberra, a la dickheads, uh, canned it all, and they used uh, basically, uh, not bullying, um, what do you call it? Oh, blackmail. They blackmailed the NT government in and were going to take all their funding off them if they didn't change their speeds because they obviously got sick of or jealous because us territory drivers are the best drivers. <laughs> I'm going to get smashed over that. But yeah, it used to be fine. Like we'd never had stuff all accidents or deaths on the road with unlimited speed in the territory. And now we get more with 130k speed limit. It's just ridiculous. It's super slow. You can't drive 10 hours at 130. It's just way too slow. When it gets slow, people get bored. That's when they go to their phone. That's why everyone uses their phone when they're driving around town at 60 because they're going to drive two hours driving at 60 k's an hour. You're just bored out of your mind. So you're doing fast. When you're doing 160 to 200 k an hour, you're concentrating. I guarantee you're not looking for your phone because you are watching the road. Uh, that's from experience. It definitely makes it safer, I think. Personal beliefs, and I've actually done it. Most of these people that talk about speeding probably have never driven as fast as most of the people in the old school territory days have on a regular daily basis. So, yeah, interesting. Um, look, now, the good technology side of it, the motor, they had to make a, was, Elon was saying they had to the, core, the copper wrap around the motor. Obviously, that's what drives these bad boys, and that's a whole new motor. Um, it's that wound that tight they had to build a brand new machine to wrap it so obviously some crazy crazy tensions in there and some great technology and they put a carbon wrap around it now this thing does twenty thousand revs per minute or more um, so what that carbon wraps there for is he's basically saying when you give it to this thing and this motor starts spinning up it wants to shinoble itself and just go Phew, gets that force and it wants to go that way this carbon wrap holds it in there and keeps it solid and obviously you're safe and sound. So that's pretty cool. Um, drag coefficient, lowest production car in, in the industry, 0 0.208. Uh, so that's pretty insane. Very, very cool. Um, what else do we got in there? Ah, new thermal pump. Now that's the big, big wig one. Now electric cars, you can go fast. We all know that. But you get to do a couple of runs, the motors get hot, shuts it all, shuts itself down. We can't, we're not playing ball anymore. This new thermal pump, they put a massive big new radiator in there, a new thermal pump tech. But he's saying basically you can run this thing ragged until you run out of juice and you're not gonna have any problems with overheating of the motors or the electric. So that is very, very cool. So good stuff there. Um, and then on the supercharger network, it's no good having a fancy car if you can't charge it. Uh, they currently have 25,000 supercharger network uh, facilities worldwide. They did another 1,000 last month. He said, so that's 1,000 a month. That's pretty impressive. Um, and they're looking to do more. It's not that it's, there's some dark sides of that too. Um, they're going to increase the power from roughly about 150 kilowatts charging hopefully to 250 to 300 by next year. So it's even faster charging. So that's really good. Uh, cars are delivering now. So that is pretty amazing. Now, there's more there. I just want to talk. But on that supercharger side, Brother's got a shop. I won't say the business, but Brother's got a shop and they look to get the supercharger in for their customers. You know, do the right thing. This is a good thing. Progressive. Let's do Let's get in there. They approached Tesla and Tesla said, no, well, they've already got someone in the area. Too bad, too sad. It's So it's not a just if you want to get a charger in. It's not an easy process. They are selective, very selective of who and where and what and how many go where. So all, all, we all sort of say, well, hey, we just got to get more charges in, which we all do. They need to be like service stations where everyone can get to them. But it seems like they're picking and choosing what they want where. And obviously, I guess you've got to be on the know there too because this obviously could be a fairly good money in return for it. So a little bit interesting on that. I thought I'd just chuck that in there, that uh, they're not just throwing them out there. They're very, very, very hard on the selection process. You have to have enough customers and you have to have enough a big enough business before they'll even let you in the door. So that was a little bit interesting, I thought. Um, thought I'd throw that out there. Now gaming, we did hear about the AMD team up with 
uh, Tesla, and it looks like it's paid off. Uh, PS5 level gaming, they're saying, uh, 60 frames per second, and uh, look, that's pretty insane. They, they had a bit of an example, oh, what was it? I forgot again, I can't remember the name of the game, but it's, but it's one of the big games out there at the moment. Oh, Cyberpunk 27.7, that's it. They were playing that live on the screen, on the 17 inch info screen, uh, and it wasn't dropping any frames. Very cool to see, great for the kids when you travel long distances, or you're stuck somewhere in traffic, or whatever, you can just sit there and play games. That's pretty darn cool. Obviously videos and all that, that's been up, updated as well. You can, the screens are all, the whole interior is just fantastic. Uh, so yeah, pretty darn cool. And it should be for the money, for a $300,000 car, you'd want PS5 level gaming in there, I, I would suggest. <laughs> um, but yeah, look, this is a ridiculously fast car. It's got a thousand horsepower. It gets up, power curve on it goes up to a thousand and then goes flat, no drop off, flat all the way to 200 miles an hour. That's a pretty insane technological feat. And uh, yeah, that's a four to a five person car that's doing this, not a sports car, not a two seater Bugatti, five seater family car, rich family's car. Um, that's doing that, so that's pretty insane. Now, now, that's it. Another week done and dusted. If you haven't already gone and seen day 10, Bluff Knoll, my hike up the 1,098 meters of hell to a vista of epic proportions. Go check that out for us, hit the thumbs up. That'd be pretty cool. And if you haven't already subscribed, subscribe and you'll get to see my ugly mug every day, Monday to Friday, and once a week generally for a nice photo journey somewhere. Okay, doke, we'll be coming this way, that way, have a great weekend. Peace.